Hello Art One students. Um, this video is to show you guys how to create your very first abstract art making assignment for our abstract art unit. Um, you should have already watched a video that kind of covered the history of abstract art. It was very quick um, and done some guided questions along with that. So just to review, um, we need to know what abstract art is if we're going to be making it. So this definition comes from the Tate website, which is a an art museum. Abstract art is art that does not attempt to represent an accurate depiction of visual reality, but instead uses shapes, colors, forms, and gestural marks to achieve its effect. So here's an example of abstract art. Um, this artist, Vasily Kandinsky, he is often called the father of abstract art, so you could definitely look up some of his work. But as you can see, this doesn't represent the reality of the world that we see every day. It's more so just shapes and colors. Um, I often like to remember back to our elements and principles of art and design when I'm thinking about abstract art, because these are the words that we're really focused on. We're not so much focused on making a landscape or a portrait, whereas we're more thinking about color, shape, line, movement, pattern. Okay, pattern and line are the two elements and principles we are really going to focus on for this first art making activity. And some of you have maybe done this before. So if you have, this will not be brand new to you. We are going to be creating something called a Zen Tangle. So what I like about Zen Tangles is it's kind of a formula and it has steps that you can follow. So if you're new to abstract art, it's a little bit easier because you can just kind of go through the steps. And another great thing about it is it's very calming and relaxing. That's actually the point of the name, Zen. It's supposed to help you kind of be Zen and be calm while you do it. So this might not be a totally bad thing for us right now. We all need to find more ways to relax. So I'm going to link this website in Google Classroom so that you guys can read about it. But um, I'm also going to walk through the steps in this video. And you can look up Zen Tangles online to get lots of examples. But there's some on the website as well. So. A little bit about the Zentangle method is through this method of drawing, you can relax, focus, expand your imagination, trust your creativity, increase your awareness, respond confidently to the unexpected, discover the fun and healing and creative expression, enter a vibrant and supportive worldwide community, feel gratitude and appreciation for this beautiful world and all that you can do, and perhaps most importantly, have fun. So. I think some of those things sound really beneficial to us right now. And you'll be making abstract art, which is ultimately what we want to learn how to do. So we know what it is. Um, we're going to get started. There's a video. So if you want to watch someone else making a Zentangle, you can click on that on the website. But I'm also going to demo it here for you. So I'm going to work on small paper. As you can see, it's smaller than my hand. Um, if you want to make a larger Zentangle, you can. But I would maybe start small just because we're going to take some time in creating this uh, artwork. So it has step-by-steps for you to go through and I'll go through these on the video and you can follow them on your own as well. All you need is a little square piece of paper, a pencil, and if you have drawing pens, great. If you don't, no big deal. Pencil will work just fine. So step one, gratitude and appreciation. Get comfortable, take a few deep breaths and feel gratitude and appreciation for this beautiful paper, for these wonderful tools, for this opportunity to create something beautiful. Okay, step two, corner dots. We teach beginning Zentangle method with beautiful museum grade cotton paper. Don't worry if you don't have that. Mine's just regular drawing paper. To answer a familiar question of what to put on this beautiful paper, place a light pencil dot in each corner about a pen's width from the edges. Now it's no longer a blank piece of paper. Okay, I've got my, my dots in each corner, pretty close to the corner. No longer blank. Step three, border. Connect those dots with a light pencil line, straight or curvy, to create a square. This is your border. I'll let mine be a little curvy. I think sometimes people get too caught up on having everything be straight and perfect when they're drawing, and that's just not important to me. So I'm not using a ruler for this. You do not need one either. Of course, if you have a ruler and you want to use one, go for it. Okay, I've got my border lines. It's starting to look like something. 
All right, step four, string. Inside the border, draw a light pencil line or lines to make what we call a string. The string separates your tile into sections in which you draw your tangles. A string can be any shape. It may be curved, a curvy line that touches the edge of the border now and then, or a series of straight lines that go from one side of the border to the next. I'm going to do a curvy line. And now I'm not gonna press quite as hard. But again, they said that it could be a series of straight lines. Maybe you wanna make a grid. So like up here, this one, they started, their string is more of like a grid that breaks up theirs. So I did this kind of like wavy squiggly line. And again, none of this is planned. You're just following the directions and drawing whatever comes out. You do not have to have a plan ahead of time. All right, step five, tangle. A tangle is a predefined sequence of simple strokes that make up a pattern. Draw your tangles and pen inside, usually the pencil, strings, and borders. Tangle is both noun and verb. Just as you dance a dance, you tangle your tangles. Draw your tangles with deliberate strokes. Don't worry about what it's going to look like. Just focus on each stroke of the pen as you make it. Trust that you'll know what to do next when the time comes to do it. There is no up or down to Zen Tangle Art, so feel free to rotate your tile in any direction that is most comfortable for your hands to draw. So I can turn my paper if I need to. I'm just gonna pick one section and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Oh, you know, I'm gonna switch to a pen actually. working with pen because, again, there are no mistakes and nothing needs to look perfect. I have no plan for what I'm gonna do right now. I'm just going to get started and start filling in this shape within my square. Now remember, if you don't have pen, you can totally work with pencil. I would suggest you're not talking while you're doing this though because you should be Focus and concentrating and relaxed. I'm just talking because I want to walk you guys through my thought process. So I don't know where I came up with the idea for circles. I just had a circle in my mind when I started. And I'm just starting with a simple pattern right now. So just circle, squiggle line, circle, squiggle line. Nothing complicated. But see, I'm not going outside of my first section that I'm working in. I'm staying within it. And I'm keeping the pattern tight. So everything is close together and touching. But again, there's no wrong way to do this. So there we go, I have my first section filled in. Kind of a basic pattern, but once I get these other sections filled in with other patterns, it's gonna look pretty cool. Okay, so step six. So I would wanna go ahead and finish the rest of these patterns, but I just wanna get through all the steps with you guys and I'll show you some finished ones as well. Shade, add shades of gray with a graphite pencil to bring contrast and dimension to your tile. The black and white two-dimensional tangles transform through shading and appear three-dimensional. You can also use a tortillion, which if you have at home, great. You can also just roll up a piece of paper towel um, to soften and blend the graphite. So I can grab my pencil. Maybe I'm going to just shade all of the um, sections in between the circles. And I'll show you guys what they mean by blending. So I'm coloring this in right now and it's not very even. So what I can do is grab a piece of paper towel I mean, a tortillion and a blending stump are just basically a wrapped up piece of paper that artists can use to blend. There's no reason why you can't just use a piece of paper towel and kind of twist it. Get yourself a little bit of a pointy edge like that. And then I can go in and I can blend my shading and make it nice and smooth. So I'll show you again the difference without the blending and then with it. 
especially since I'm using a mechanical pencil, which to be quite honest, blending, you shouldn't be using mechanical pencil, you should be using, okay, so if you look, it's pretty harsh. See how there's gaps and spaces? So then I'm gonna go in with the blender blend that out and then I can go in and erase but again we're not looking for perfection okay see how much smoother it is all right so that is step six step seven initial and sign this is art you created you should sign it put your initials on the front on the back place your name date comments and observations Hold your tile at arm's length, sorry, step eight. Hold your tile at arm's length, turn it this way and that. Appreciate what you just created. So I'm going to initial, I'm not done yet, but I'll still initial it. Then on the back, and don't write with pen on the back because it could be see-through. So um, on the back, you can put your full name. And then my the date, so today is May 11th, 2020. And then any comments or observations. So how did you feel while you were making this? Did it make you feel relaxed? Did it make you feel stressed? Did it make you feel like an artist? And then hold it out and take a look at what you made. So let's look at some other Zentangle. So this is kind of the idea, right? This is what a finished one would look like. You would have, you know, everything kind of filled in, maybe even add some black shading with the, the pen as well. And we can look up some other, if you just Google Zentangle, go to images. Look at all of these cool, really cool Zentangles. So like they can be pretty simple like this, or look at it, they can get pretty complex. So it's really just dependent on your ability Anyone of any age and ability can create a Zentangle. So if you had yours broken up into uh, squares, each square could have a different pattern and it would look like that. Um, but yeah, there's really no wrong way to do this. It's just a nice way to break into abstract art. So I want you all to have fun, enjoy creating, and I look forward to seeing your artwork.